the government news brief for Wednesday, November 30, 2016. In the news, the government will pump more than 17% of the 2017 national budget into the education sector. The Pan American Health Organization, World Health Organization, PAHO, says that more health officials are necessary for the screening of sickle cell and thalassemia. And the government is collaborating with international organizations to improve citizen security data and prevent crimes among youths. Stay tuned for these and other stories. Thank you for staying with us. I am Renette LaFleur. Now for the details. Finance Minister Winston Jordan says the education sector is a priority and that government will be pumping more than 17% of the 2017 national budget into it. More in this new Le Damon report. As part of the government's vow to advance the nation's development by investing in the Guyanese people, the education sector will be getting the largest chunk of the proposed national budget for 2017. Minister Jordan says that the allocation will support government's address to problems which beset the sector, beginning from early childhood through to university and beyond. Mr. Speaker, we cannot afford to fail our children, who are our leaders of tomorrow. For to do so will be tantamount to undermining every sector of our economy and ultimately condemning our nation and future generations to a life of pessimism and poverty. We therefore have to ensure that we properly diagnose the problems and apply solutions that seek to structurally change the mode, scale and regional appropriateness of intervention. Meanwhile, Education Minister Dr. Rupert Rupnarain welcomes the announcement that his sector is set to receive some $43.1 billion, or 17.2% of the 2017 $250 billion national budget. From what we heard, um, the concentration is correct. I know that we in education have a great deal of work to do if we are going to provide the kind of you know, resources that they, that's going to be needed for the transformation that the minister was talking about. So I was listening very keenly to see what, in fact, um, we would be needing to do in relation to training and so on. So there's, the budget sets out, I believe, a very creative and ambitious way forward. And we now have to buckle down within the ministries and see what particular tasks we have to make the kind of contribution that we need to make. And certainly in education, we have a great deal to do. The $43.1 billion allocation to the education sector covers a series of response to address the institutional human resource and strategic planning deficiency that have been plaguing the education system for many years. These include addressing issues of overcrowding and facility improvements. It also covers addressing to the pool of qualified teachers in the public school system and investment in improving the learning outcomes of students. I'm Neola Damon for Government News Brief. The key to effective screening of sickle cell and thalassemia lies with improved capacity of public health officials. Delicia Haynes tells us more. The Pan American World Health Organization, PAHO WHO, has committed to training two hematologists in an effort to support early screening and diagnosis of the two blood disorders. PAHO WHO Country Representative to Guyana, Dr. William Adukuru, has proposed a series of training in hematology for personnel in the public health sector. Within the whole country, we do not have any uh, hematologists, and, uh, and therefore there is a need to have hematologists you know, trained. We hope to train at least two hematologists. Um, and therefore, we've thrown it to the team coming from GPSC, as well as um, the Guyana Sickle Cell and Thalassemia Association to find from their, from their constituency basis um, physicians and others who may be interested. It has been recognized that for some time there has been an upsurge in the number of late diagnoses being done due to the fact that test samples are often sent overseas to determine results. For the year, more than 900 test samples were sent out. Only a minimum number of these results have been received. Our other issue has, and it's a very big one as it relates to not having trained personnel, even I would say at the level of my unit, we do not have any person who is really um, very much versed 
in um, addressing sickle cell and its, um, its complications, so there is a need to build capacity. However, Dr. Karen Boyle, speaking on behalf of the Public Health Minister, said that partnerships between the ministry and other stakeholder agencies has seen robust action being taken towards ensuring that early screening for sickle cell and thalassemia are done and that persons access optimum health care. I think we have um, potential for training our physicians some more to ensure that we also have persons at the other end who have the skills and the know-how to one day be able to offer you the best possible care right here in Guyana. PAHO WHO in collaboration with the Ministry of Public Health recently hosted a stakeholders meeting and workshop to develop a work plan for sickle cell and thalassemia in Guyana. It is important that medical practitioners understand these conditions to better tend to the needs of those who suffer from them. For the Government News Brief, I am Delicia Haynes. The government is working with international organizations to improve the quality of citizen security data and the ability to design effective policy and program to prevent crimes among youths. Here is more. Minister of Public Security Kemra Dramzatan says evidence-based decision-making will bolster law enforcement institutions to work towards reducing crime and violence among young people. Evidence-based decision-making for citizen security in the Caribbean will certainly make more effective our law enforcement sector. Guyana is hosting a two-day meeting with local and regional stakeholders on evidence-based decision-making process for citizen security or the Cari Secure Project. The United Nations Development Program UNDP Deputy Country Representative Shabadna Malik noted that CARISECURE seeks to improve the quality of citizen security data available for decision making on policies and programs aimed at reducing youth involvement in crime and violence. In order to contribute to reduction in youth crime and violence, UNDP will focus on achieving the following three outputs. First, standardized and disaggregated crime data sources established to facilitate identification and measurement of youth risk and resilience factors. Second, evidence-based analysis of crime and violence data carried out to inform policymaking and programming. And third, improved decision-making on youth crime and violence based on available evidence at the national, sub-regional and regional levels. Minister Ramjatan says that the Car Secure project is one additional tool that can be used to create cultural change in addressing crime and violence among youths across the Caribbean. We therefore must craft a character and a culture that will see and make assets out of our young people rather than have them exist as liabilities. And so, this morning, I am so happy to see this initiative taken where one tool in a kit, as it were, is now going to be used to realize those three aspirations as they were. The CARISECURE project is being funded by the United States Agency for International Development, USAID. The project will work across 10 eastern and southern Caribbean countries with specific emphasis on St. Lucia, St. Kitts and Nevis, and Guyana. The five-year project is part of the USAID's Youth Empowerment Service, YES, project, which was launched earlier this week. Delon Sanko for the Government News Brief. The Ministry of Business will target a number of investments in 2017 to ensure a level playing field in the economy. Gabriela Patram has the details. In 2017, the investment portfolio of the Guyana Office for Investment, GoInvest, will target $139.8 billion in investments. This was stated by Minister of Finance Winston Jordan during the presentation of the $250 billion 2017 national budget. Minister Jordan says that GoInvest will be restructured to ensure greater diversification within the economy, while additional focus will be placed on tourism, agriculture, and light manufacturing. These ventures are estimated to create with an additional 3,870 jobs. In addition, ongoing institutional strengthening will result in a more data-driven, client-friendly, one-stop investment portal. To this end, our government has allocated the sum of $213.2 million for the continued strengthening of Go Invest in the new year. The government of Guyana will also enforce a requirement that every effort will be made to ensure that at least 20% of public contracts are awarded to small businesses. Minister Jordan says that this will ensure a level playing field in bidding for government contracts. Government interventions towards the promotion of a healthier and more diverse business environment 
not only focuses on companies and firms, but also on the empowerment of individuals and the facilitation of small and micro enterprise while expanding its existing programs in a, aimed at fostering youth entrepreneurship. Small and micro enterprises will continue to be supported through the Sustainable Livelihood and Entrepreneurial Development, SLED, which provides business grants and training for vulnerable groups. The Micro and Small Enterprise Development, MSED, project will continue with its financing and training and development activities targeting 660 clients, and the Small Business Bureau, SBB, will be extending its reach into educational institutions to expose students to entrepreneurial initiatives and skills. Additionally, the Ministry of Business Strategic Action Plan will continue in the next year to focus on improving the ease of doing business, attracting increased foreign investment, supporting development, and increased economic opportunities, among others. For the Government News Brief, I'm Gabriella Patram. The Ministers of Indigenous Peoples Affairs say the $13 billion allocated for the hinterland communities will significantly improve the livelihoods of the residents. Zanil Williams reports. Minister of Indigenous Peoples Affairs, Sidney Alcock, says that many hinterland youths will greatly benefit with the introduction of advanced technology and more opportunities in the future. For us, I see the opportunity for uh, opening up the, the hinterland with proper institutions that will be able to give the training that is desperately needed for the opening up of industries within the hinterland and uh, this is a need for bringing the country together. We have been divided too long. Minister Ali Kok adds that the sum allocated specifically for housing units and roof and water attachment systems in Region 1 and 9 is welcome. The allocation provides an opportunity for the hinterland communities to have better houses and security, especially since the population is growing rapidly. We are a people that, you know, lives not in... Uh, we, we live scattered. And because of the population growth, you need to take a better approach of how you do housing within the communities because you have to have space for agriculture and other development so i look i look forward to this being a, a big support to our people meanwhile Minister within the Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affairs, Valerie Garrido Lowe, notes that while she's very pleased that the Hinterland Employment and Youth Service, HEYS, got $191 million to continue the other half of the program, she is more thankful that works will commence on the Madia Hospital. This health facility has been in a deteriorating state for years. In the Madia Hospital, I'm happy to hear that it's being upgraded because um, nobody had much faith in that hospital at all, you know, uh, I myself, so I'm happy to hear that a specialist at least will be going there and it's been upgraded, it's time it's been upgraded. Minister Garrido Lowe is appreciative that other infrastructural works will be undertaken to improve roads, bridges and airstrips among others. I am Sunil Williams for the Government News Brief. Tomorrow, December 1 is World AIDS Day. The day will be observed under the theme, Hands Up for HIV Prevention. The Pan American Health Organization's Progress Health Report 1966-2016 reveals that Guyana recorded its first case of AIDS in 1987. Since then, AIDS cases have progressively increased, reaching a peak of 435 in 2001. Thereafter, the number of cases dipped until last year. Initially, AIDS cases were outstripping HIV infections up to 2000. However, shortly after 2000, the trend shifted and Guyana started to witness a boom in new HIV cases. Recently, Public Health Minister Dr. George Norton declared that there were about 500 new HIV cases each year. According to the UNAIDS, about three in every five persons living with HIV in 2015 were receiving antiretroviral therapy and is 58% of the HIV population in that year. Over the years, there have been concentrated testing and counseling campaigns in the fight against HIV AIDS, both on the public and private level. 
The Ministry of Public Health is aiming at having at least 90% of people with HIV in Guyana testing, and of those 90% treated by 2020, bringing the viral load low enough not to transmit. We have come to the end of today's edition of the Government News Brief. The details of these and other stories can be found on Gina's website. You can also visit and like our Facebook page to be updated as the news unfolds. Do join us tomorrow for another edition of the Government News Brief. I am Renetta LaFleur. Thank you for watching.